Hello and welcome to this overview of Roland Pro AV's V60 HD video switcher. It has four SDI and two HDMI inputs, as well as four XLR TRS combo inputs, RCA line in, as well as some additional IO and control functions. So this is a very compact and powerful switcher for uh, SDI workflow. You can see you have the full mechanical push buttons for program and preview and your transition controls. Let's talk about some key features before we dive into the operation and features of the V60 HD. Versatile inputs and outputs, you can easily combine cameras and graphics across these six inputs, creating professional content with transitions and overlays. There's also PTZ control. So recently expanded with firmware update 3.0, you can control up to six cameras using a USB gamepad, including models from JVC, Panasonic, Canon, Sony, and PTZ Optics. There's also a professional smart tool set built right in so you can overlay independent picture in picture and lower thirds graphics using the composition effects, but also auto mixing and audio follows video. So some audio automation features for analog and digital audio sources. And between the audio automation and PTZ control and approachable video switching, the V60 HD is a single operator solution. So you can switch video sources, do overlays, graphics, as well as audio mixing, automate what you need to, PTZ control all in one tabletop unit. So a single operator workflow. Switching, I'm gonna cover the basics. So you just queue a source in preview. So I got my multi-view output right here and I have a program output right here. And we'll get into the uh, output assignments and capabilities in a bit. So if I want a seamless transition, I just press cut. If I want to do a dissolve, I just set the time value here. So mix is a dissolve and I can do that or manual with the T-bar. So I can just go back and forth between different sources on preview and then switching them. We're going to look at the back of the V60 HD in just a moment. This is program. This is preview. And this is an independent aux out that adds a destination clean cut switching. There's a setting in the system menu to have it follow program when you need it to. Say you have a downstage monitor or you have a center screen feed and you want an independent output. Um, you can do cut switching with this aux row here. You can also use this to recall memory presets. So you just press and hold to save and then tap to recall. And there's a third hidden mode in here for PTZ control that we'll get into in a bit. So those are the buses and the transition controls. If you're more familiar with AB style bus mixing, you can also set that up in the system menu as well. Looking at the back here, we have on the bottom right, those four SDI inputs. So you can take in 720p, 1080i or 1080p sources and update 3.0 expanded the frame rate support. So 2398, 2997, 60, those are supported by the SDI ins now, and we'll convert it to the 5994 output. Now, if you have 720p cameras, you have to output 720p on those four inputs. They're not scaling, so it won't resize the video. But if you're outputting 1080i or 1080p, in either of those modes, you can take in 1080i and 1080p on inputs one through four. Inputs five and six are worry-free multi-format scaling inputs. So this can take in a variety of resolutions and will resize the video automatically to match the output format. In addition to that, the scaler, you can go to menu, video input, and then choose the HDMI input settings. And you can change the size and position of the video even further inside that menu. Also input number six has an RGB and component input. So you can flex six from HDMI to analog and utilize that. You have four outputs, two SDI and two HDMI. And we're gonna go back to here. You can see in the menu, video output menu, you can change these, but this is a status screen here for panel info, output info. So I'm outputting 1080p, the default is 1080i. So you just go to menu and then system, and then you can change it here. So these are a mix of program and preview, but I can change any of those to aux. More than one can be aux. And I can use that single aux video output to those assigned outputs to do my signal. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, routing options 
with the V60 HD as far as managing your video uh, outputs is concerned. Going back, you have to the left of that, the HDMI multi-view output. That's what you've been seeing up here. So you get all eight, we call them cross points, eight cross points. So four SDI, two HDMI, and two still images. And those still images um, stay in the system with the latest update. So you'll be able to uh, have them boot up without the USB stick. And you can also import with the via USB JPEG, PNG, as well as BMP image files. And then to the left of that is a control port. For that, you would connect that directly to a computer to control it with the RCS software. But if you want to add PTZ cameras, then you need a little network. So whether it's static IP setup, you can use a uh, simple network switch for each camera, the computer, and the V60 HD. Or if you want to do, it supports, it can take an address via DHCP as well in the LAN settings. So you can set it up on a Wi-Fi router. And that USB memory port is for those still images we were just talking about. The uh, tally port above it, you can wire a tally system to the V60 HD. Or you can also wire um, a GPI so you can make a switch and uh, control any command with that switch. More information about all that is in the reference manual. Same with the RS-232 control. And then the LAN control too. Beyond the RCS software, if you're using any control systems, the protocol info and uh, command list is in that reference manual on the website as a PDF. So you can get all that information and program a module for your control system. Or you can just use the uh, RS-232 port as well. And that information is in the same reference documentation. Jumping to the audio on the top right, there's four XLR TRS combo inputs, and then five and six are the stereo RCA line in. And just going to this here, so these are not gain knobs, these are faders in knob form. And so to stage your mix, the sources you're using, you just bring them all to zero dB here. And then in the case of the mic inputs, you go to menu, audio input, and then set the head amp gain. So that's like the preamp gain. You would just dial that in for the microphone. Additionally, you also have phantom power. You can set in the menu here, as well as pan control for these four inputs. And then uh, line input five and six. There's a stereo fader, as well as the main out. So you would have control options for those as well. We'll get into audio settings in a bit when we do the uh, RCS software. And um, also audio out. You can also do some de-embedding as well. There's some uh, settings for that in the audio output menu. So we kind of covered the basics of switching with this unit. In addition to that, there's also HDCP indicator right here. That's in the system menu. So if you need to bring in a Blu-ray player that has HDCP copy protection all the time, you can turn this on, it'll do a soft reset. It will disable the SDI outputs as part of HDCP compliance but you can get the signal through for movie night. Also above here is the uh, output fade. So you could do a, a fade to black in addition to these different mix controls here. And we'll get into the DSK a bit when we get into the composition effects. But first I want to show you the RCS software and PTZ control. I'm going to switch right over to the RCS software. It's already connected on the network. And you can see I'm going to leave the uh, outputs up so you can see that I can control this. Just like it's a hardware switcher. And that's one of my PTZ shots I'm going to show you there. Another cool thing is too is if you have a USB MIDI controller with faders and buttons, you can right click and do learn MIDI control and map the digital mixer to that hardware piece. For example, if you have a bank of faders and solo and mute buttons on a USB controller, you can say map all the embedded audio to those faders and you can have control over that. Otherwise, you just have knobs for the analog inputs right here. So, you know, that adds a little flexibility to it. And also, too, is that the channel strips 
you have a visual EQ and compressor because you can go into the audio input menu and you can set the EQ and compressor in these menu options. But you can see that this is kind of more click and drag intuitive. So you can visually set that up or load a preset and have a starting point for your EQ and compressor for your audio channel. It's also um, some additional audio features. So the audio auto mixing window, you can turn on and off the auto mixing effect for various analog and digital sources. The higher the weight, the more priority it has in the mix when auto mixing is turned on. Also, audio follows video is a way to help automate channel mutes. Here's audio follows. When that cross point is selected, the audio passes through when it's on. And if it's not selected and it's on, it's muted automatically. You can also map analog audio sources to cross points as well. So that's kind of part of those automation tools to kind of help with the audio mixing part of production. This can all be done in the box. I mean, you can see there's EQ and compression and multiband compressor on the main mix. So there's tools to really help you dial in the sound for your production. And one last thing I want to show you in the RCS software before we get to PTZ control is you can also quickly change multi-view labels. So it's just a matter of clicking and typing in the new label info for those window positions up there. Camera control, up to six cameras. I have two set up. Pretty straightforward. You would just uh, click on this setup button and then choose the protocol and then put in the IP address of the camera. You can use the software for control and recalling presets. Pretty straightforward. So here's, you know, doing this here and using the mouse to control it. And then here's my recall. But we were talking about a USB gamepad. I got one right here. It has X input. It's plugged right into the same RCS computer. And you can see I'm using the joystick. And then also I got my overhead camera set up. So I just click to change over to camera one. And you can see I can adjust that as well. Now, if I want to reset these cameras, I can recall the presets in the RCS software or the hidden mode. Press and hold that mode button until it's light blue. And for the six cameras, I can recall up to eight presets each. So preset one was kind of like my reset. So I'm going to reset that camera and I'm going to reset this camera. That kind of gives you an example of you know, a single operator workflow. I just controlled using a gamepad. I have the software and I have the panel for preset recalls as well. So it offers a lot of flexibility in the PTZ workflow and you can control up to six cameras with that. In addition, you can also, if the camera supports tally, you can map the tally light to a cross point so that when say input five is selected, it would send the tally signal to this camera that I have in program. And if it has a built-in tally light in the front, it will light up. To do uh, PTZ control, you do need the RCS software connected to it and open, and then the USB port on the computer, that's where you connect the USB gamepad. Next, what I'm gonna do is show you composition effects. I'm gonna start with the uh, downstream keyer or DSK as it's uh, abbreviated here. And I'm just gonna go back to some of my camera shots here. When I queue up the DSK in preview, by default, it is set for input six, but I'm gonna have to make some adjustments from the default settings here. First off, I got to key out green instead of blue. So I'm going to change this to chroma green. And from there, the level and gain are the two primary settings that I'm going to adjust. Hue and saturation. If you have a person standing in front of a green screen, those hue and saturation controls do come in handy for dialing in the green based on the lighting. So you may need to make hue and saturation adjustments to get a nice clean key. But most everything's going to come from these level and gain settings, which have knobs right here. See, I can turn this up. Then once I have this kind of queued up, it looks good in preview. When I press the DSK button, it will fade it in based on the time knob value. 
So it's always based on a dissolve with the time. In addition to that, I can do, so notice too, this, this is independent. So I can do mixed transitions and seamless cuts without interrupting the graphic. I'm going to show you a split bus effect next, picture in picture, and also split. If I turn on split here, I can do a split screen and you can also adjust the center position of the two. This is helpful if you have a side-by-side -side that you want to create during production. But we're going to focus on picture in picture. So these are presets. So when you press a picture in picture preset, it immediately queues up the two and you can adjust them and it will remember what you did you have two different positions and sizes and shapes that you can set up. I go into the composition settings here and I go into picture, picture one. And just so you can see it a little better, I'm just gonna bring it into this uh, program view. I'm just gonna bring it in briefly. Notice that this is a split bus effect. It locks off the two buses. So now I can change the background image, but I can also change the inset window with seamless cuts. And it's locked off while the pip is active. So here I'm going to increase the size and then I'm also going to, you can change the shape to make the circle a circle, change the aspect ratio to one to one here. There I have my, uh, my circle pip there. I can bring it in and out with auto or I can cut it in and if I wanted to both go at the same time I just press these buttons at the same time and I can have both effects come in and out together now again too is that you know I could take this picture and picture out and I could queue up pip 2 and then change the source and then transition that in I have two different picture and pictures I can go back and forth between during production you know just disable it it turns green you're back to a standard picture-in-picture -picture preview, change the preset, and bring the other one back in. These two composition effects are independent. The picture-in-picture -in -picture and the DSK can be on together at the same time. Note, though, it's a layer effect. So the DSK is a top layer. When you think of the video layers and the effects engine, it's like preview and then program and then picture and picture and then DSK as the four layers. So the graphic will always be on top of the picture and picture image. Finally, just wanted to review some key points that we discussed about the V60 HD. Versatile inputs and outputs, you saw that we we're easily able to combine camera and graphic sources across the six inputs. This allows us to create professional content using the transitions and overlays that I demonstrated. The PTZ control is huge, controlling up to six cameras using a USB gamepad, including those models from JBC, Panasonic, Canon, Sony, a Visca over IP, it's called, and PTZ optics, and a professional smart tool set. So I was able to overlay independent picture in picture and lower thirds graphics using the composition effects as well as auto mixing, analog and digital audio sources. So between the SDI inputs, the multi-format HDMI inputs, the control options, as well as the PTZ features using the gamepad and the preset control here, as well as the audio automation, brings everything together in a single operator workflow for the V60 HD. And for additional support, visit roland.com slash backstage. Thanks for watching.